The Democratic Alliance says it respects the Constitutional Court's judgment on the reopening of candidate nomination lists. The party, however, believes the decision will privilege the ANC and UDM who missed August's initial deadline. Joining us tonight, Democratic Alliance National Spokesperson Siviwe Guahube. Siviwe, good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, some are now saying that with the benefit of hindsight, perhaps this was a miscalculated move by the Democratic Alliance. Your view? Absolutely not. And good evening, Cathy, and uh, good evening to your viewers. I think absolutely not. I think this was an absolutely important court case to pursue, primarily for two reasons. One, when the court order was handed down um, around the, the, the proclamation of the date of the election, including the uh, registration weekend, there was a lot of uncertainty, Cathy, about what the, the IEC could or could not do in terms of amending the uh, election calendar. And in fact, a lot of um, uh, experts and analysts and legal minds were on split sides about what this could actually mean and what how it empowers the IEC. So it was absolutely important for us as a party to go to the Khan court and to say, could you clarify? Is the IEC empowered to be able to amend the calendar? The Concord has now come out to say, well, it is within the rights of the IEC to determine whether or not that is necessary. And as a party, we will respect that and we will move on. However, it was important not only just for clarity, but also for consistency, as we've got precedent where other political parties were barred from contesting an election because they didn't meet the IEC's own deadline. Of course, part of how it has been framed is that the decision made by the IEC was done specifically to benefit the ANC. Look, I mean, Kathy, it for us, I mean, and uh, and and it and you know, our respecting the Con Court decision does not mean that we were not, we are still not of the view that we are still of the view that this decision to amend the election calendar not is legal, as the Con Court has said. However, it it also does, in effect. Uh, reward political parties who have been tardy with their processes. You remember that the 23rd of August was not just the one day that political parties could submit their list. It was the last day on which they could submit their list. And so we shouldn't have to reward political parties like the ANC when they don't meet deadlines that are necessary for the selection process. And so we respect the Khan Court judgment because, of course, that is the apex court. However, we are of the view that it will benefit the, the, the ANC and any other political party that did not meet the deadline. Of course, what has come as a consequence of the debate and also this move to take this matter to court are the perceptions of impartiality where the IEC is concerned, and that even extends to the Constitutional uh, Court. What role does the DA think it has played in those perceptions? Look, Kathy, the reality is that as the official opposition, we have to be on behalf of South Africans, make sure that we look very closely at this process. You remember that there was a whole debate and a whole process around the compilation of the Moseneke report. And, uh, and the IEC held that it could not actually um, have this election this year. But it was through the processes of the court, the processes that other political parties also participated in, that we, we have fought for this election, election to happen within the constitutionally prescribed period. So it's very important for an opposition party or any party for that matter on behalf of the people of South Africa to hold the IEC to account, to hold them to standards, and which, to show them that they are in fact impartial because they are the independent electoral commission and they are in fact the custodian of, of rooting out free and fair elections. And so it should not be seen as a way of discrediting the process when we question the wisdom of some of the decisions that the IEC makes, but it should be seen as part of the robust process so that we can all be satisfied with the election results that come at, uh, after the 1st of November. Of course, it, it, it could well be okay if that's all that happened, but we know that that's not all that happened. You had a senior leader of the Democratic Alliance basically saying that the Constitutional Court was captured. 
Look, I mean, I, you know, it, it's not my it's not my role, Cassie, to speak on behalf of uh, Helen. And the reality is that, you know, you know, she speculated, and uh, and people are split about in their opinions about what that means or, or how that contributed to the perception of the Crown Court. But the reality is that as the DA, we've got a strong record of having, you know, um, said that an, a judiciary is absolutely crucial in terms of being a, as a, as a part of a constitutional democracy, and that. That's why even this decision, and while we did not really seek out this kind of outcome, the reality is that we've got to accept it, we've got to move on, and we've got to campaign and be able to make sure that we reach our message to all South Africans. Do you accept, though, that at a time where the trust of South Africans in various institutions, whether it is public institutions like the IEC, whether the judiciary is at an all-time low, and we're going into this election cycle with very different perceptions, of, you know, that, that, that are part of the national debate, and that's to be ex expected. But that there is a certain level of responsibility when it comes to political parties, even leaders of political parties within political parties, uh, when they're making statements and the impact of what their statements, what the statements they make will be. Look, absolutely. Um, political parties should take absolute responsibility for the kind of perceptions that are created by, you know, either their participation in these kind of processes. But, Cathy, at the same time, it's absolutely important to differentiate between asking questions, particularly when it comes to the IEC and its role and its preparedness, for instance, asking questions and critical questions about why certain things have happened this way and and in terms or versus speaking disparagingly of a, an institution it's quite important that in a constitutional democracy this the systems are tested and like i said i think it's absolutely important that political parties are absolutely responsible um however we should be able to particularly when it comes to a free and fair election be able to question some of the decisions that are being made particularly by the iec does the DA believe that the judiciary in this country is captured? No, absolutely not. What are the conversations that have taken place uh, with your federal chair over this matter? As I said, Kathy, I think Helen is best placed to answer these questions uh, herself. But I mean, as I said, the Democratic Alliance has a strong record of having said that the independence of the judiciary is, t is, is of absolute importance. Even when we saw um, some reports and even the president confirming that there is a, a, a committee that sits within Lutuli House that has had discussions about deployment of judges within the judiciary. Even in spite of those things, it's absolutely important to look at the track record of the Democratic Alliance in, them have, in us having said primarily that at the independence of the judiciary is literally the backbone of our constitutional democracy. And we will continue to be robust in engaging with the courts, but we have to be able to protect its independence. But at the end of the day, these questions must be asked where certain things have not gone right. The DA's national spokesperson, Sibiwe Gwarubi. Sibiwe, before I let you go, what happens next? Is this the end of this matter then for the Democratic Alliance? Look, yes, and uh, we've said that we absolutely accept the decision of the Crown Court. Now we are full swing um, going into this election campaign. It is a difficult election campaign. It is different, but it couldn't be more important. And so we are putting all our resources and our energy into reaching all South Africans. And, uh, and we'll be launching our manifesto at the end of this week. And so we're confident that we will be doing well. All right, let's leave it there for tonight. Siviwe Gwahube of the Democratic Alliance.